Now the traditional banking has changed to online banking. The traditional shopping has moved to online shopping. And the traditional dating has moved to online dating. And the traditional reading has moved to online reading. Everything, everything has moved to the internet. And that's where the new challenge on your privacy is threatening you. Nobody can hear somebody's phone. And even if somebody hears unauthorized, that can be presented as a proof of anything. There can be casual conversations. Out of context, it can be taken differently. There can be jokes which can be taken seriously. There can be little humor which could be taken as evidence for something. Hello everyone and welcome to the weekend meeting with Sanalit Marku. I am Shubhi Sina, heading the youth wing of Rationalist International. And our session for today is on right to privacy in digital world. I would like to welcome Mr. Sanalit Marku to come and begin with his presentation, which will be followed by a question answer round. Thank you everybody. And uh, uh, this is a new venture, I mean, in a way that uh, we have been doing this Zoom meeting for almost two years now. But now we have uh, started a new way of reaching out people simultaneously on three applications. Thanks to technology, we are on Zoom and we are on YouTube and we are on Clubhouse simultaneously. And the people watching on all these three applications are linked together. And people could ask from any of the application and we would be answering. That's the pattern that we have developed. So coming to the technology that is helping us to do this thing, the other side of technology, how it's going to influence our day-to-day -day life and our privacy. That's what we are going to discuss today. Have you ever felt uncomfortable that you're being watched everywhere when you walk around in the city. There are surveillance cameras everywhere. Somebody somewhere is watching you all the time. And you, you know why it is done. There is terrorism emerging as a threat all around the world. And it's to be countered. But all the same, you feel uncomfortable that you are simply checked by somebody. And you don't want to tell the whole world or somebody unknown somewhere where you're going and which grocery shop you're going to buy your stuff or which street you are going to have a little morning walk and whom you are walking with. These all are your private worlds. Nobody should be, nobody in the world should be able to know that is what you think. You're right. Absolutely, you have a right to think about your privacy. And what is privacy? Privacy is your right to be yourself. Your right to be what you are and your right to decide about what you want to be in your life as an individual. And there shall not be any other interference in the process. In a practical reality, this would mean that your privacy, your way of thinking, your way of doing things and whatever you are doing in your life should be your world and nobody should be able to peep into that. Only to the extent that you allow it should be possible. That's an old norm that we have developed. With civilization, we have developed the idea of privacy. Uh, the question is, to what extent do you want to give up your privacy for the public interest and what extent the society can or the governments can or the system can know your private world. You know about the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. At that time, privacy was not such a big issue that came into a part of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. It's not there. But later, there is an Article 12 which speaks about the rights of privacy. That speaks that no one shall be subjected to arbitrary interference with his privacy, family, home, or correspondence, nor to attacks upon his honor and reputation, 
everyone has the right to the protection of law against such interference or attacks. That's uh, Article 12 of the document about privacy in addendum to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. But with the new terrorist presence everywhere, do you think that you have that privacy? Can you jeopardize your privacy? And to what extent you can jeopardize your privacy? That was the question we have been discussing till some years back, but now there is still another major issue in everybody's uh, purview. You know about the, the, the WikiLeaks, which led to a huge hue and cry everywhere in the world, because it has opened up a Pandora's box about the world of your privacy. Now you know that there are secret agreements between world nations to share your information and to cover your entire activities. If necessary, they could get all activities of you on the internet, which will give access to what are you searching for? What are you reading? What are you watching? What are the sites you're visiting? What kind of products you're buying? What are your interests? Everything is open to some other people. And that was done officially by the states. Of course, I mean, what Snowden has done was not liked by many nations. When it was, uh, the, the leaks were published simultaneously in Washington Post and The Guardian, and the then British Prime Minister has warned not to further publish things. And if they publish, that will be taken very seriously and warned that it could be officially asked as a, a, a state secret, which would be, if they continue the publication of the material, that would be violating the national security. And Snowden was running from country to country to get an asylum. But it has shook the world, practically shook the world. Because now we know that a lot of information which we never ever thought are known to companies and to governments. And they are keeping this information, disseminating this information, and, and uh, they are working on this information. There are boards and uh, there are I mean, uh, uh, spy rays on computer that can further investigate on the basis of what you are searching and the entire world that you are dealing with. If you open your, the, the camera of your computer, no matter whether you have opened the camera in working, but still the cameras could be started and every single activity that you're doing could be simply monitored by somebody. This was done by intelligence agencies earlier, but this could be done by anybody, anybody who could hack. So now we are thinking about a new set of laws that should limit the interference into our privacy either by the state or by the corporations. The corporations are doing it as well. You know that, for example, Facebook. I mean, it's well known that Facebook is collecting a lot of information. It asks us permission to give our information. And I mean, of course, we sign up and we, we cons give our consent to get a lot of information about us. In fact, nobody would read the long six or seven pages of uh, uh, the, the consents that we are agreeing to you. I accept the moment you sign it, you are agreeing that a lot of things about your entire internet activities are being monitored, are taken into uh, a, a storage of information about you. And then starting from there, whatever advertisements you are seeing on your sidelines, when you're watching the uh, internet, whatever advertisements you see. And whatever you see on Google, for example, on the site lanes, what comes and what comes uh, at the top, all these informations are based on your interest, which was monitored by somebody. The whole advertisement on the internet is working on that basis. 
you, one could decide to show you a product by knowing your location, knowing your age group, knowing your buying patterns, knowing the brand selection that you have, and knowing your general interest on different things and show you and bring you products according to your interest so that the marketing is sharp edge to your requirements. But can this information, which is collected, I mean, without you properly knowing what, what was being collected, can this be used for some other purpose? Can this information be given to some other companies in a way when this information is used in an advertisement which is, I mean, paid by some company on Facebook or on Google? In fact, though the, the, the deep edge of this information is not available to them, practically the entire information is made at their service and it's reaching to you. This has opened up a serious question about the security of your life, your thoughts, your, your world, and the whole, whole idea about human freedom that we have been developing was questioned by this process. So therefore, there have been very serious international movements to ensure your privacy. Coming to what, what the privacy would mean, that also we have to understand before coming into that and how it is being taken in different countries. The whole history of the right to privacy was coming, I mean, back from 1800s already. The, the individual has the right to decide about his life and he has a right to keep it secret to anybody whom he does not want to share with. For example, what's the money that I have in my bank account? Who should know it? Can the person who is looking after my accounts in the bank access to the information, which I don't want? Unless there is a criminal investigation, nobody should be able to know what, what is the money that I am transacting. And nobody should be able to know where I have an account. And for example, where I'm staying, these kind of rights were almost guaranteed over the years with the growing movement of, for privacy. But everything has changed when we shifted to the online forum. Now the traditional banking has changed to online banking. The traditional shopping has moved to online shopping. And the traditional dating has moved to online dating. And the traditional reading has moved to online reading. Everything, everything has moved to the internet. And that's where the new challenges on your privacy is threatening you. And like any other good things in the world, there are some, you know, some spiders, some webs are there. And you have to address it and you have to resolve it and you have to go forward. Not that you have to go away from internet. Not that you, you, have to, you have to go away from all these new technologies and applications that are developing. You have to use it. You have a right to use it. And you need to use it because you want to be updated about everything. But all the same, you don't have to jeopardize your rights while using any of these applications. That is what was taken very seriously, uh, I mean, some years back in European Union. And uh, there is a new understanding about the right of the uh, individual to have his or her privacy in European Union. I don't know to what extent it is implemented in other countries. For example, it's much higher than what it is in United States and that it is in uh, UK. In European Union, when you visit any website, you are asked first, do you accept all the cookies? It's a simple question. You must have seen it. But this question is very important. If you accept all cookies, they can put a lot of uh, hooks to collect your information. That's what they are telling. Because they would need a lot of information to operate. For example, if you are using a GPS application, 
they should know exactly your location. Otherwise, it would not work. That's a basic information that is required to have that application working. For example, if you're looking for uh, a, a taxi, if you are looking for a, a housing somewhere, one, one should know your location. But can you give a blanket uh, uh, opening that the website has a full right upon knowing your location? You have now a right to limit it. You can limit it to the extent that is required for the, the running of this application only that you permit them to see, which means you're limiting the right of any web server or any internet facility by stopping them collecting any information than what you permit. That's a big success. It's a big achievement that the right of the people about privacy has achieved now. When you are opening a website, you have to agree that they use a lot of cookies for that. So that mom moment, you have to select what kind of cookies you are agreeing. Well, I mean, if you have a, no problem that uh, all information can be collected, I mean, you have the right to open up also. I mean, there is no question. But if anybody is concerned about their privacy, they have a right, in European Union at least, to decide what cookies are allowed. I mean, to collect information to what extent that you can decide. Still, they have to give the full services. That's a big success. And there are efforts now going on that similar legislation is done in different countries. On the other side, there is another effort that states are doing. States are trying to monitor all information without you noticing. For example, what are you doing on Facebook? What are you doing on internet searching? Any state would be curious. Why? Because it's part of the information collection that they, they, that they require. And any political party would be interested to get the information about your general interests and commitments. And any corporate uh, firm would be interested to know what kind of, uh, I mean, material that you're searching for, what kind of stuff you're asking, um, you're looking for to buy. The, the, the market, the state, and the surveillance departments, political parties, opinion makers, everybody is interested in the, in the information about you. Things are easier than earlier times nowadays. One can, with the advanced uh, operational capacities that the internet is offering, collect information so fast in spinter seconds with the artificial intelligence at service. The entire information of all the individuals of a certain area on a, on a certain product or a, on a certain interest or on a certain political commitment can be disseminated and an optimum decision can be offered to the person who is using it. What are you, what likes you are giving? on your internet, I mean, uh, social media, somebody can see. But somebody can watch and monitor and collect the information and disseminate it and, I mean, give a, a conclusion about your broader interest. And it can know you better than you know yourself. Because we have developed tools to understand ourselves in a faster way than human brains. And this can be at the service of some other people. So this is the fundamental issue connected with the, the primary security of people in connection with the digital world. But it goes further beyond. When states decide to collect information for security reasons, I still remember my times in uh, New Delhi when the, when the Sikh rebellion for a separate statehood for Khalistan was active. Everywhere in the city, first time we have started seeing surveillance cameras were put in. One felt difficult at that time. Now we know that in all the major cities, everywhere in the world, there are surveillance cameras. But those times, it was not very usual. 
every city junction, you could see a surveillance camera. You're being watched by somebody. But can this information be used against you, against your interests, if you are a normal citizen? That was the question. There were many questions about the, the possibilities of misuse of information that's collected. Or, or, for example, the surveillance cameras, how long it can keep the information. On, on, on traffic road, I mean, regarding traffic, there are CCTV cameras at many places to see, for example, traffic violations, to document it, which could be understood. But that is meant for, if it was meant for knowing traffic violations and recording the information, how can we guarantee that this information is only used for that and it is not at all used for any other purpose? How can we guarantee a, a CCTV camera report in front of a shop who all are going in? For security reasons, it's fine. But beyond security reasons, can it be used by somebody for something else? To just for watch you? Just to stalk you? Or private detectives, can, can some, some private persons use such measures? Simply, I mean, not, not even internet, not, not even the surveillance through, the, through your searching, but through a CCTV camera, can somebody track you? Can a, a private detective company go on behind you to know about you for somebody else? Can somebody know about my life without my consent? This was the question. But now, uh, this is now very clearly established by law in almost all the countries that uh, this kind of information cannot be stored beyond a certain time and cannot be misused or cannot be used by any other purpose than the purpose it was meant for. And if it is proven that it is used in a different way that it was actually meant for, one can reach a court of law to challenge it and question it and see that the culprit is punished. But when it comes to state also, the same question is there. Can a state open your mail and check what was in it? Well, it can. If something is very important happening, and if, if there is a terrorist attack is expected, and if uh, somebody has to be watched carefully, can one's mail be opened and checked? I hope uh, many people would remember the, the famous or infamous Indian postal bill. The postal bill allowed, in the original format of it, to open anybody's mail with the permission of a district magistrate, open it, check it, and close it and give to you without you noticing. There was a law which has been passed by the parliament, both houses in India, and sent to the president for his approval. As per the laws of India, the president normally has to sign a bill passed by both the houses of the parliament but he has one provision to keep it with him for six months without signing and he has also a right to send it back for the reconsideration of the parliament because he thinks it's not right so i think it was kr narayanan who was the president of india when this bill came narayanan as he was i mean one knows that i mean he was a civil rights person uh, he was, he was a, a civil servant and he was Indian ambassador to China and United States. And he was, um, uh, I mean, vice chancellor of many universities, including the Nehru University. And he's a person with a very clear social understanding and commitment. Ker Narayana refused to sign this bill. He kept it for six months. And just before the expiry of six months, he sent back to the parliament asking for reconsideration. The parliament can still pass it and send back to him. Then by law, he has to sign it. But when a president sends it back to the parliament, it has a huge moral pressure on the parliament. It, it says that it's not okay just to do it. 
That's what he wanted. He sent it back and the bill never came back to him to sign. It was not presented again to the Indian parliament. So that bill is not there. Therefore, your mail cannot be intercepted by the state in India unless there is a court order to do it. I mean, only when there is a serious uh, I mean, threat about the security of the na nation, it can be done. Your phone cannot be tapped. Nobody is legally allowed to tap your phone. Though agencies would do it still, but legally it's not possible without an order from a certain authority. And that has to be in black and white, not just a word. Nobody can hear somebody's phone. And even if somebody hears unauthorized, that cannot be presented as a proof of anything. There can be casual conversations. Out of context, it can be taken differently. There can be jokes which can be taken seriously. There can be little humor which could be taken as evidence for something. So this is a very tricky area. And only when it is permitted by a certain level of authorities of investigation, nobody's phone can be tapped by law. So that is, that is guaranteed in, in, in many countries. It's a question of privacy. I, I tell you one small example of um, the respect for privacy regarding photographing a person. Many people now, without thinking, photograph, a, and, uh, I mean, some people whom they are seeing elsewhere on a couch, you take a photograph. But by law, in most of the civilized world, it's a crime. You cannot take the photograph of a person without that person's permission, unless the person is a public person of a certain level. For, for example, a celebrity comes, a, a movie actor comes, a politician comes, a, a very famous person comes, I mean, people could take photograph and that's taken, it's allowed. But when, if the person says no, no, it's not possible. You cannot show the face of a person, even on a news of other people who are not connected to that, if they are in the picture. No, you cannot keep those pictures. You have to blur their faces. If you are showing a video of somebody in connection with a news, and there are other people who are not connected with that news in that picture, no television is allowed to show those faces. They have to. Uh, I mean, put a, put a blurbing image that the face is not shown. Children's picture cannot be shown on a video, on a public video, which is seen by everybody, because children cannot take a decision for themselves. And anybody who takes a picture of a child, if it is presented publicly without their permission, if the parent's permission or the guardian's permission, it's not legal. That is all respected. Many people do not know it. I, will, I wanted to tell a story about my own experience when I came to Finland first. I was seeing my first apartment to stay. A state agent was showing me an apartment and there are some people staying there. So I wanted to take a photograph of this apartment to be shown to one of my friends how it looks like. I wanted to take a picture of the interior of the house. So the estate agent immediately, when I opened the camera my, on the mobile phone, no, you cannot take a photograph without the permission of the people who are staying there. They're staying for three more days. So without their permission, you cannot take a picture of any part of this house. And that needs a written permission from those persons. So they said, there is no problem. You can take a photograph. No, that was not enough. They had to write on a paper that they have no objection if I take a photograph and they have to make two copies, one given to me and one given to the estate, estate agent because he was also a party witnessing that. And then only I was allowed to take a photograph. That's how the laws are. When you want to take a photograph of a person, you have to ask the permission of that person. Nobody can simply take a photograph. Nobody can publish somebody else's photograph without their permission. There are laws to stop all these kinds of things. So all what you should know about your privacy, many things that you're worried about is that you have rights to control, to decide about what level of privacy that you, you want to keep. There are protection measures for 
everything. Because when, for example, when the state is making a surveillance somewhere, if you, if you don't want to be in the picture, you can look for places, you look for routes where there are no surveillance cameras, and you can go through that road. road. Therefore, where are surveillance cameras are to be told. You know that when you are driving, there are cameras to take photographs just to know whether you are over speeding or not. But by law in many countries, if there is a camera taking a picture of your car, you are to be warned beforehand. You, you have to give a signboard at least 100 meters away, telling that there is a camera 100 meters away. So you can you have a right to know that somebody is taking a photograph. Can you simply take a CCTV camera photograph of somebody? E even on your premises, can you do that? No, you have to warn it. By law, in most of the countries, there should be a signboard telling that there is a CCTV camera watching this place and you will be under a camera surveillance when you enter this place. There should be a mark and that should be shown very clearly. When you enter a house, if or, or a business house or a premises or, or a hotel or, or a public place or a shop, wherever it is, and if there's a CCTV camera, that, should be, that has to be displayed there to warn you that there is a camera that is watching whatever is happening there. Then you can decide whether you want to go there or not. So you have a right. So that is how the individual's right of privacy against the CCTV cameras are guaranteed. Go to any place. I mean, many people are doing it so properly, but some people are not doing it also. But by law, in all civilized part of the world, you can see a picture of a, a camera telling that this place is being watched. And that's, that's displayed very clearly. So why are we not taking care of it? I mean, we, are, we have a right to I mean, see that I mean, our privacy is guaranteed. It's not important for many people. People say that, what's the problem? There is no problem. But the moment you think that there is a problem, the moment you think that I don't want to be on public display, it's my right to uh, uh, stop any kind of surveillance on me. You have a right to avoid it. And you have to be told that it is done. If your mail is opened, you have to be informed that your mail is opened. If your mail is intercepted, you have to be reported that your mail is intercepted. These are laws. There are other laws also. If you are arrested for something, you have to be told why you are arrested. And what are the accusations against you? And you are right for a lawyer before speaking the first word. Again, it's a question of your privacy. To speak something, even to a, an investigation officer, you can say that I need a lawyer to speak. You have a right. So you have a right to keep your words, keep your image, keep your mobility, everything you have a right. That is what precisely the privacy laws are uh, stressing for. Because at the end of the day, all these kind of things are quite natural, running properly, no problem, you would think. But you have a right to decide what you want, what you want to show, whether your face is to be recorded somewhere, photographs by somebody, or whether your mail is seen by somebody, whether your mail is intercepted by somebody, whether your searching is followed by somebody, whether your uh, internet activities are collected, not even by humans, but by computer robots, I mean, uh, which is called as boards. If it's collected and stored without even name, if it's collected and stored somewhere, and if it's used in a large data bank, you have a right to decide whether you allow it or not. That is what is really guaranteed in the, in the present situation. And unless and until we realize this value, and we realize and use this value, it will not be implemented. And this is what I wanted to say that, I mean, the right of privacy is a fundamental right, which many of us do not recognize. Many of us do not care for it. 
but it is an important right. It is an important right, like the right to express your views. It's an important right, like the right that you have, you can keep your conscience about anything. It's an important right that you have to uh, be of yourself, not, not at somebody's mercy, not at somebody's watchful eyes. Every single individual has a right to be of that person by himself or herself. That is what is the, the, the fundamental idea of privacy. And that was what was being violated by the corporations and the states and uh, different agencies and different applications all around the internet. So the, in the digital world, it's easier. I mean, many people think that, I mean, the earlier times of the new applications being, I mean, circulated, nobody knew what all could be done by that. When you buy a computer game, for example, what's the kind of game you are watching and what is it involved in? I mean, are, I mean somebody can watch and one can understand what's your broader mindset. And it can analyze it and it can make patterns and it can even understand your mindset than you know it, which is something you don't want to give. You have a right to keep your, your world to yourself. And, and the whole idea that I'm trying to uh, impress uh, upon you is that understand your rights. You have a right to have your privacy. And that right is as equal as a fundamental right to have your right to have freedom, your right to have free expression, free press, it's equally valid. So don't allow anyone to get all information about you. Unless, for example, even parents sometimes, parents have a right sometimes, because when internet is open to children, Everything is available on the internet. Children should not be exposed to certain level of violence. It can be detrimental for their mental growth. Children should not be exposed to pornography beyond, I mean, before a certain age. So there can be parental control on that. But once you are an adult, it's your right. Nobody can control it, what you're watching. Nobody can see what you're watching. Only when it becomes a, a real necessity on a certain situation that one can interfere. And that has to be declared and told. That is the key of the idea of privacy. So the, 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 all these private level uh, I mean, activities that we are speaking about is at a different level. But when a state or a corporation or a big company uh, or, or, or a big uh, internet uh, group or a portal trying to collect your information, they may, they may not even know you as an individual. They may not have any identity of you with your picture or anything, but everything is collected and disseminated and it's going into a data bank. That's where the new laws are controlling it. And, we, and there are efforts by the privacy promotion groups everywhere in the world to modify and improve the privacy laws to suits to international standards that we have reached in different parts of the world. But such laws are in different stages in different parts of the world. It's a collective value and a human right. That's the crux of the whole thing. It's a human right. It's a new value that we have developed that every individual has a right for privacy. And nobody has a right to ask about these kind of things. What you are eating, it's your private world. Unless and until you want to tell it, it should not be expressed. It need not be expressed. When you are uh, introducing yourself to somebody in, in many countries, in, especially in, in the developing countries, India, I know, for example, what people would ask is, what are you working? What's the salary that you have? Are you married? How many children you have? It's none of their business. It's none of the, you know, the whole activities that you, you are probably work, going to do something commonly with a common interest on a, on a basketball team. When you join a basketball team, it's no, nobody's interest to know what's your salary and what's your job and uh, how many children you have and uh, what, what kind of profession you are in or where do you stay 
beyond the practical information that where you are coming and going uh, connection with your transporting. So one has to understand that every the, the least information possible is what, what should be collected. You have to have information about people. If somebody is missing, of course, one would uh, be seeing, I mean, where the person has gone. In that situation, yes, one would be, I mean, looking for information. If somebody is, uh, I mean, suspected to be a, a terrorist or a criminal, yes, then there should be an agency who should decide. It cannot be a single person or a local police officer who does it. But with the primary information to what extent one can go, there should be an approval authority somewhere who should decide, who should collect the information on what basis this, uh, this surveillance is allowed. And that should be recorded and that should be verifiable later. That can be questioned later. And there should be responsibility fixed to somebody to take this decision. And then only it is possible. And this respecting this privacy is not only protecting us, it's also protecting a social value. Therefore, I would suggest that we all, because we all come from societies and uh, traditions which may not have this new value system properly respected. But we have to modify, we have to improve, we have to get on to the next level where we understand the value of privacy. We respect the value of privacy and we don't peep into the private lives of other people allow people to run their life the way they want it and help people to look after themselves. Nobody wants parenting. The society need not parent on everybody. Nobody should look on the private world of people. And that includes, I mean, starting from small things, what, from what food you eat, from where you buy. I mean, starting from there, no amount of private information is to be shared with other people or no, it should be not others' business to look into all these details unless and until it is based, necessary in the context of the communication that you have. So if we start respecting others' rights and behave accordingly, that will be the new beginning of uh, setting a new standard. And also when others try to encroach into your privacy, be polite, be friendly, but insist on your privacy. If you don't want to give an information, say that, I mean, well, that's my private, that's my privacy. It's, it's not an offense, but it's an insisting about a right. But if you want to tell somebody about something, yes, of course you can tell. But if you don't want to share an information, you can be strong enough to defend your right to keep that information for yourself. And that others should not feel offended about that because once you don't have a right to get into the private world of other people, you are also protecting yourself to keep your private world to you. It's a give and it's a take. So let's start doing a new, new era by understanding what is the right of privacy and by respecting the right of privacy of others. Thank you. Okay, uh, so on this note, let's move forward to the question answer round. Yeah, good evening, Mr. Sanal. <clears throat> My question is, uh, I heard that uh, before we passing a message or communication, there is four other people watching it or going through with them. You are the fifth person in that process. Is this is true? This is what I heard. You know. Uh, I don't know if they are doing it for the security purposes of the criminal movements uh, or the policies and procedures of uh, uh, Google, yeah. YouTube, yeah. and Facebook. Uh, because they don't know. Uh, I heard that. Yeah. Sorry, that was uh, uh, a glitch. You, you can continue, please. Yeah. So, did you understand me, please, sir? Did you hear? No, I didn't question? understand the question. I didn't understand the question. Yeah. Okay. I heard it is said. When you telephone or you communicate with anyone through Facebook, Google, or YouTube, you are the consumer, myself. I am the fifth person in that role. You know, I don't know this is done due to the policies, procedures of the institutions or, or a safety of the country, or I don't know what are the interests. This is a uh, 
true story or is a made up story i don't know uh, did do you know anything about this yeah, google are we the consumer yes. the fifth person no i don't know the fifth or fourth but uh, for example when you search anything on google it records a lot of information about you but nobody is actually watching it at that moment no individual is watching your information but it's collected it's stored it disseminated to decide what kind of advertisements are to be shown to you but you can decide at what level of uh, uh, privacy you want and you can even stop that can i add something to this please now please. there is a questions are asked to facebook to mr sokerberger's company that uh, january 6th was propagated in the knowledge of facebook why didn't he do something about this is going to be heard in the congress as far as i understand so i don't know uh, if this is true or not but uh, i think it, this is in progress they are enduring all this because the cases are still going on it's very, very alive in the united states you know yeah i mean it's it's you know these are two different things google is one company and uh, facebook is another company and facebook has agreed that it had limitations about it has been collecting information it has been uh, storing information and it, i mean the, the the chief of facebook has uh, sukabak has uh, come to the uh, the senate and i mean a committee and i mean he has answered questions and he has apologized for it and he has i mean agreed for improvements and still i mean there are questions coming up so all these companies are successful not only by selling advertisements but strategizing the whole information by collecting information only and to what extent they can do that is their interest and what extent that has to be stopped is the consumer's interest so that that's that's an ongoing struggle every company every organization would like to get this information and use it for their benefit and then the state can interfere and the people can press for it that we are, our information should be controlled and nobody should be able to take away our information that's an ongoing struggle that's precisely what i'm speaking about i'm not i'm not uh, you know going into the fine details of what the senator has asked uh, sukaberg or not that's not the question what i'm suggesting they are, i'm suggesting the question that we have a right to stop it and that has to be enhanced and that has been increased and more and more uh, rules should come to stop all these companies to collect our information they can provide an information and they should be able to use our information only to the extent that we permit and that is possible in in the uh, in the european union that's not possible in united states now so i think now we can move on to the next person uh, we have ravi with us again uh, i would just unmute and see actually uh, sir it was a very informative session uh, like uh, i have two questions sir uh, one is uh, in a political science per- perspective would you consider uh, right to privacy as a natural right and uh, another question is even if i'm losing my privacy i'm getting uh, technology as an advantage like uh, i'm giving my uh, uh, privacy like i'm giving my information to apple and they are enhancing my experience of the use of use of the de- uh, device and uh, if i give it to google they are giving me targeted ads like uh, uh, i need what i want like uh, in, instead of getting too many ads i'm getting what i want right uh, that's my question sir yeah, yeah i and i understand i mean you see now earlier in the beginning of all these applications and for example apple apple is not collecting that kind of information that google is collecting but uh, most of these applications have been collecting a lot of information beyond any control beyond any limit and that has been going uncontrolled for a long time now that there is an international awareness about this this issue they are all are asked to give an option to the consumer to decide what level of uh, interference on your privacy or pr- your private information is allowed by you you can decide for example you can turn off your location then your location is not uh, seen for example then there are issues coming you if you turn off your location on your mobile phone or your computer and you are you are trying to use gps it would say that i cannot use gps because your location is turned off so then you decide open the location then it will ask again a question only for this application at this is this time or for ever so you can decide that only for now only when this is open now 
So you can decide it. And after that, you can decide to off it. So one needs more and more awareness about these applications. And there should be education. I mean, right from the school time, there should be education about the rights of people, the right of privacy and its application. So that is what is required by understanding the right of privacy. Will that clear your question? Uh, like sir, uh, but it enhancing my it is enhancing my uh, technical use, right? Like uh, it it is enhancing my de device experience and it is giving me a targeted ad so that I don't go uh, to the wrong place. It is connecting me to the right place. Right? Yeah, the the whole question is the new way of uh, I mean our internet usage. It it would require a lot of new knowledge about using these applications. That is why. The skill of using these applications have to be introduced to children from schools and there should be more and more public understanding about how to use and how to control the interference into your privacy. The, the whole question is connected with your understanding about the whole thing. If, if you are not a person who is savvy to technology or, or, or the software applications, then you are easily opened up the whole thing. That's one of the limitations that many people are telling also because many people are not that te technically savvy people like uh, you are saying it is the it is the awareness which is needed but not the uh, entire el elimination of uh, data collection no i would say the data collection should be limited to what we agree to that's very simple like that i can i should be able to decide to what level of information i want to give nobody should be able to collect any information beyond my permission level and that should be an option for me. And for that, one should have more and more awareness about the use of this application and how to stop this interference into things. I can decide to give certain information, but I can also stop certain information. It's my prerogative. And that should be respected by the company and the state and the applications. Yes, sir. Okay, yes, thank understand. you. Next, uh, Madhu can ask a question. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Sanjay. Actually, uh, the government regulations may end uh, or uh, can ensure the safety of this uh, private enterprises stealing our details. But how much it is possible if other countries who are scavenging our details in uh, any other countries? Uh, I hope you got my point. Yeah, uh, that, that's an important point. I mean, for example, one government can decide what kind of uh, laws are, what kind of privacy laws are in practice in that country. You can do that, of course. But all the same, uh, some other countries can have a different kind of uh, laws which would permit everything. So that's why I said the example of European Union. In European Union, if a portal is operating from European Union, or if it has a reach on European Union, the moment you open, it asks about the cookies level. And it will say that, do you accept all the cookies and catches? Then you can decide no. Then it will give the options. What are the cookies we are using? And what information it will collect and for what? You can tick, 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 and you can avoid uh, whatever you don't want. And then you can decide what all you have allowed and what are not allowed. Then it may say, for example, a certain information. For example, if you are on BBC, it would, for example, need your location because they may, would, they may like to give you information more connected with your location. Then it would tell you that when you, if you don't use that cookie, you may not get an information based on your location. I said, it's okay, my choice. Or you can decide, yes, I want it. So, it's, so you should have an awareness about the whole thing and you should be able to open it up and decide what all cookies you allow. Then what information, for example, your location information, your interest, for example, if you are interested in sports, that's one information about you. Are you seeing a lot of sports sites? That's an information. Can it be collected by somebody? You're watching uh, sports on BBC. Can this information be stored so that you can be shown again sports? You can allow it. You can, you can stop them understanding it also, but it's your right. For that, you, have to, you should have a basic understanding how these cookies are working. And for that, there should be a public education. Once you know this new right, this is a new world. So all young children should be aware about, I mean, they should be taught in their curriculum how to understand, I mean, protect their privacy of information on the level that they want to give. It's they who decide what they allow. 
seems it looks like very delicate, but it's an important new right that's developing, and therefore it's to be taught, and there should be public education so that the adults know it properly also. Is that clear? Madhu? Yes, sir. But uh, actually, my point is, if uh, some other countries, that means an enemy country, they want to scavenge our details, uh, citizens, uh, uh, like uh, Aadhaar number or the data of caste and religion and etc. and etc., then how can we uh, going to solve that problem? That is spying. Because all the regulations are meant for uh, these private enterprises and uh, citizens, right, sir? That is my always I am thinking about that question. Yeah, such informations are normally protected in the in the system itself. For example, your bank account numbers, you're using your bank account numbers on the internet. There are a lot of protections that it's not using directly the numbers. And I mean, there are a lot of encrypted ways to stop it. And there is no way that it's, it's uh, interfered into unless and until you are vulnerable. If you do not know how, for example, phishing is working, and some people can trap you by pretending to be somebody else, then only it can be used by people. So therefore, it's important that you, you understand how things are working and how these kind of things are operated upon. And the, the, the information about your, your, your private details, private numbers, the statistics, and all these kind of things, it's a protected information, can be protected in a lot of different ways. Other countries, for example, a, a competing country or, a, or a, a country in war can simply cannot simply interfere and do that if you have enough protection measures. Like, for example, the bank information cannot be stolen by somebody else normally. There are protection messages. Sometimes there can be leakage. Sometimes there, there can be some, uh, some mistakes or there can be some glitches which can be, uh, I mean, which can make trouble. Like there can be a traffic jam on a road also. I mean, there can be problems. Then you find a solution to that problem. These informations are generally protected and it cannot be st stolen by people. But now, additionally, the private information of individuals, when you search things, you understand things, you watch things, that, can, that, that cannot be also taken by people to the extent that you don't permit. So these kind of informations are protected. Also, one can decide in many countries, uh, for example, if, if a certain portal should not operate in a country, nowadays that portal can be stopped. Certain, for example, certain websites cannot be seen from some countries because it's stopped. That's all possible. There are a lot of scopes in the whole thing. For example, um, uh, uh, Facebook, for example, is not permitted in some countries. It's, it's not allowed in some countries. Some other countries, for example, in Russia, for example, I, I think many operations like WhatsApp is not very active there and people are using more and more other applications. So countries can decide what, what kind of applications can be available in that country. If they suspect uh, some uh, mischievous thing with that application or any other operations, they can stop it. Uh, if you remember the famous case of the Chinese, uh, uh, I mean, mobile company, Huawei, they were elite. In, in the 5G spectrum, there are information collection um, methods, and that could collect information about the people who are using it. Therefore, it was stopped in the United States, whether it was right or not. So these kind of things can be watchfully seen, and it can be stopped. There can be laws. I mean, there are ways to stop all these kind of things also. But the states do it. The companies do it. They, they try new, more and more innovative ways to collect all our information for their benefit. And state would also like to do it to collect information for their benefit. Therefore, we as the, the, the citizens, the people, we have a right to defend our rights and we have to insist on more and more powerful laws to defend our rights, not to be, not to provide our information, our, uh, I mean, break our privacy in public interest or somebody else's interest. So the question that you said, if somebody can scavenge, it can be stopped. There are clear yes, ways to say. Thank, yeah. thank you very much. Yeah. Thank, uh, thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Madhu. I mean, Shubhi, you make um, take over uh, oh. for, the, for your Zoom. All right. So I think we can move on to the next Zoom person now. Uh, we have Saptarshi Bhattacharya with us. Okay. You were telling about this uh, people deciding what type of uh, privacy they can, means what type of access they can give. So what type of education should be given to the school children? Because uh, we have so many rights in our constitution. I think six or seven rights are there. 
but right to privacy is not in constitution right uh, right not uh, means right against exploitation is there i believe right against exploitation can be used as right to privacy because whatever the data is collected it will be exploited so what type of education in the school should be given so that the students understand what is privacy and how it affects them because otherwise people will not understand the other question is every right has a reasonable restriction to it like there is a freedom to you know gather and make association but there is a restriction you cannot make a terrorist organization or there is uh, in freedom for uh, equality of jobs in public sector there is restriction that sc st obc quotas are there so what type of restriction should uh, the rational people propose so that when the restrictions are put those are rational justified restrictions not some whimsical restriction which many governments put in the name of reasonable restriction yeah what i feel is the, the fundamental question that you said that as i understand is uh, to to what extent this uh, information should be given to people whether it can be protected by law uh, primarily there is no law clearly speaking about at least in the constitution it's not mentioned as a fundamental right right to privacy also in the universal declaration of human rights it's not mentioned it has been added later as an additional statement right to privacy is mentioned right to privacy is guaranteed in many constitutions um, as part of the whole package or there are new bills passed uh, to, to to provide you protection but the whole question is how to what extent it is to be uh, implemented it it has to be implemented at the higher and higher level possible and and we have to fight and fight like the consumer rights the consumer rights you know it it became 1960s when the consumer movement began i mean the rights of the consumer was very limited now the consumer has much much more power than earlier similarly the right of the individual about the privacy is more and more enhanced by demanding it by forcing it by telling to people by bringing in 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 public attention and articles and by making new laws if there are not enough laws you have to make new laws and to what extent it can be interfered that's what i said you know at certain times for public interest it has to be interfered when it is interfered but who would decide not some anonymous person somewhere not some hanky panky people here and there who can decide about our privacy there should be a responsibility fixed at certain level for example if um, somebody's privacy has to be interfered somebody has to be watched or monitored so then there should be an authority responsible for that who should sanction it and that person should be responsible if there is a mistake in the judgment and why a person should be monitored or his uh, i mean in internet activities are to be monitored or his phone is to be monitored has to be reported with facts and evidences to the authority concerned authority there should be a responsible person for that and this person should verify it and give the sanction all in black and white and when later it is informed once 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 the, a certain period it is performed and after that it can it can only be allowed for a certain period and after the period the person whose information was collected should have a right to know that his information was collected it cannot go anonymous if somebody wants to collect my information for any reason there should be an authority who should decide not anybody who wishes to do it and that authority only should permit it and then he is responsible for that decision and later i should have a right to know that my information was watched that cannot be you know covered up i have a right to know later that my information was very fake and because of this this doubt this suspect i i have a right to know it and once i know this information and if it was absolutely baseless and a fictitious ground i know which officer has granted it on what grounds i should be able to go to a court of law and challenge it so a responsibility has to be fixed for that so unnecessary interference can be stopped by fixing the responsibility to a certain officer and with clear conditions and my right to know that i am i was under surveillance for a certain period 
And uh, I mean, that is because of this reason. I have a right to know about it. And that has to be respected. That is one possibility of handling it. Every time, like a person is arrested, he has a right to know why he was arrested, under what law he was arrested. And what was the suspect? He should know it. He has a right to defend for himself. Similarly, if anybody's information is collected by the state for some reason, there should be an authority to decide, and I should be able to know that I was under surveillance, and for what reason, and if it was a wrong action, I should be able to challenge it, and there should be an officer who will be responsible. Then it will not be misused. That's one, one way of solving it. What do you think about educating in the school? Because right to freedom, right to, these are edu I mean, taught very thoroughly. But right to privacy means privacy as such is not taught, not even in school. It is a part, some in some law college or somewhere. So I think with internet and digital world coming up, it should be an integral part. So what are your thoughts about it? Absolutely. I, I fully agree that. I mean, because even the right to have freedom, the right of uh, free speech, the right of free expression, even these are not taught in our schools. Our fundamental rights are not part of our curriculum content in these schools. So I would suggest that many things that are not taught now are to be there in our schools. For example, the new value system that we are trying to uh, highlight, like the, the spirit against discrimination, the right of the individual to be respected, equal, the right of equality, and the right for legal remedies, everything has to be, these, these are the fundamentals of our living. These are to be part of the primary education. That includes, I would say that I mean, the right to privacy, right to free speech, right to respect others, right to live in a harmony, like, like, you know, peaceful coexistence. All these fundamental values should be part of our education, including the education about the environment, ecology, all these kinds of things are to be part of the education. And protecting our privacy, privacy is not being, not being secret. Being secret and privacy are two different things. Being secretive is another thing. But even somebody has a right to be, if somebody is secretive about oneself, well, he has a right to be secretive. And I mean, there is no doubt about that. But right to privacy is a respect, is, is, has to be respected by the society and that has to be taught in the schools as a, as a primary value. I fully agree with your views on that. Thank you for that idea. Hi, thank you, Shubhi, and thank you, Sanal. And uh, now, Rahul, over to you. Hi, hi. Uh, I suppose I'm audible. Uh, recently, I came to watch a video uh, in Netflix regarding social dilemma, in which some ex-techies are claiming that the social networking companies are using highly integrated AI algorithms which track us every each and every time we get into a social network and we are in 100% surveillance in which they tend to make us addictive and use these networks uh, many times, you know, more time, spending more time on it, thereby even hacking our ideas, even our votes, even our, uh, you know, uh, sell, uh, by selling their products and making profits. So these ideas can even hack our uh, ability to vote. So it might even affect our democracy. How, you know, really concerned this is, or maybe it's something they have exaggerated. Uh, Rahul, that's the question we are discussing. You know, these were possible some, uh, I mean, three, four years back. For example, in Trump's election, how a lot of fake stories produced from a small country like Macedonia has influenced the whole decision making, has been seen by the whole world. I mean, how it can be influenced. Therefore, any information that is coming, we should have a right to verify the authenticity of that, number one. I mean, any information can be on the internet and it can be spread like wildfire. That doesn't mean that it could be correct. So there should be ways to check information and stop information which are uh, false. That's number one. Number two, the information collected about us, our political activity, political leanings, our economic activity, our interests, our entertainment level, what kind of entertainment, everything is market. Even our political views are market. Opinion making is market. So anything that's connected with uh, any kind of marketing, marketing of opinion, marketing of a product, marketing of a political movement, political idea, marketing of a view, viewpoint, marketing of a software, whatever it is, if that is used before, without our permission, that has to be stopped. That's the whole idea that's developing now. So therefore, it is important 
that we should be able to decide what kind of information can be collected about us. That is where, that is why, for example, it's already achieved in European Union. It's already achieved in parts of Australia. And uh, it's being discussed in the in United States, but it's still not in uh, full action. But there have been very strict action, for example, against uh, Facebook and Google and all these companies. And I mean, there have been many uh, warnings from the government about their actions. And they've been asked to explain things and I mean, answer questions. So by, by making a law, European Union has made it very clear that any company collecting any information shall be with the permission of the last end customer or consumer. So every time you open a website, first time when you open, a, 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 immediately an information is coming. What are the kind of cookies we are used to? Do you agree that we do everything? You can decide, yes, it's easy. And trusted companies, you would do it. If it's BBC, you are not worrying. But if it's a company that you have, or, or a portal that you're seeing first, you have a right to go and see. And you can decide. What are what what is allowed, and and only those information can be collected. No other information can be collected by the structure of the portal also. And if it's proved any time that they have collected any information beyond the permission that we have given, it's an offence, and they can be legally handled for that. I mean, nobody would dare to do that. So that is being uh, understood everywhere. That is why this question is coming. Internet surveillance for marketing purposes or political purposes or opinion making purposes or whatever it is, uh, has to be with our knowledge because we are the people who are using. Yes? Yes, continue. You wanted to ask something. Yes, I Since you mentioned, mentioned Facebook and it's uh, about the security issues, Last day, the, there was some news and all coming out that uh, Facebook was deliberately, even uh, when they knew that uh, in India, anti-Islam posts were being posted in the Facebook and oh, yeah. the media, uh, they just kept quiet about it. So what's your take on that? The question is very simple and it's a correct question also. Facebook has been doing many things and they have apologized to the whole world and to the, I mean, the whole consumers. And many of the things are now restricted. And uh, the, the representatives of Facebook had to answer the select committees of uh, American system. And they, they have been fined also. And I mean, of course, I mean, there are changes happening. Still, there could be many more things because the right of the, the, the customer or the consumer or the user of the internet is getting more and more powerful. And we are insisting on more and more rights about our, our privacy and our rights. And more laws will be coming and more and more regulations will come and it will improve eventually. And this is a natural phenomenon. Every time when there is a new technology coming, there can be glitches happening. I mean, there could be many ways to use it in the fullest use of those people who are building up these structures. But there'll be on the other side, there'll be efforts to uh, I mean, in, stop the interference and protect our privacy. This is a win-win fight. And of course, at the end of the day, since the person who is using at the lower end who is using is the master of deciding everything. Because unless and until the person is not using it, it's not working. That's why, for example, the moment when uh, uh, there was a rumor that uh, WhatsApp has a problem of security, millions of people moved to Signal immediately. Because in the marketplace of uh, softwares and applications, there are alternatives available. If there is a security risk somewhere and somebody is violating our security, and if it, that's made public, if our information would be taken by WhatsApp, they first said that they would take. That moment, millions moved to Signal. But then they had to say that, no, no, we would not take it. So that's the power of the, the, the customer, the consumer, the, the, the person at the, the end user. So there is competition in the field and it's possible that our pressure, the public opinion, would have a say. Will that answer your question, Nihal? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, uh, thank you. So I think now we can go to Ratish KK. Uh, you can please unmute yourself and proceed with the question. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, sir, my uh, inference is... Uh, uh, this data breach or security breach or security or, or uh, the privacy breach is crime throughout the world. 
but still there are company who make spy software they are spread even in america or europe even anywhere in the anywhere in the world they are their presence is there why so if it is it's a crime so why the countries are not controlling this type of country uh, companies and the one question is, is there any international law because the internet is a inter- use worldwide but is there any international law which governing all those things internet is uh, opening up and then is expanding its horizons and every time if there is a, there is a law of use in any country or i mean the original country where it is installed uh, the new applications and new 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 systems that develop will open up further questions immediately which were not addressed earlier which were not in our purview earlier because every it's a fast expanding area every time when the new application comes there are new issues and new questions and new violations of our rights and the breaches of uh, the previous structures everything can be there there can be new issues coming up so that has to be it's an ongoing process of rectifying it and as you rightly said there are breaches everywhere i mean of course there are crimes there is police everywhere but still there are crimes there is decoity everywhere there is violence at many places so there should be permanent um vigilance about that and that has to be stopped there are hackers there are a set of people who are called ethical hackers to get correct information i mean i would say that i mean no kind of hacking is possible unless and until it is permitted by a level of certain authorities and that has to be at the highest level possible and the privacy has to be respected so any kind of uh, spywares that is made any kind of uh, what we call uh, bots that are created to give for artificial uh, i mean uh, i mean sending structures and all these kind of things are to be controlled are to be monitored and there should be monitoring agencies but still there would be i mean agencies and i mean viruses are there with i mean with all our efforts to stop all these viruses still there are viruses new and new viruses coming but we find immediately antivirus to handle it so this is an ongoing process it's a it's a it's a permanent fight and it's a through this permanent fight this long struggle we would reach more and more closer to perfection it's a permanent pursuit for perfection and uh, and there is nothing like perfection when you reach somewhere and you feel that you understand that still there are more challenges and you still go forward that's how things improve and the things become better uh, can i ask one more question sir please please uh, so what is your take on using the pegasus software by modi government in, on many of the politicians and uh, even the supreme court judges all those things well um, i would say that any kind of interference into the information about people has to be monitored and there should be a person an officer responsible and there should be sufficient reasons to do that any kind of interference that is to be fixed at all i mean so there is no way of doing it now without any permission but in india it's used by i mean it's alleged that governments are using a lot of softwares not only to collect information but also to manipulate information it's questioned and i mean it's i mean raised in the parliament and it's raised it's talked in the media all these kind of places these are discussed but these public discourses are really good in a way that's where opinions are created and new views are emerge and finally uh, the clear ideas about uh, i mean stopping any kind of interference would come to reality for example if you imagine how the the laws of um, the right of information came into being that everybody has a right to get information about any kind of government decision It was a long fight but the 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 continuous struggle finally got it as a reality similarly there should be a clear law that no government no agency no no uh, i mean company or corporation should be able to interfere into our i mean or or misuse any system without sufficient reasons which should be verifiable by a secondary authority which could be questioned by the 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 person whose uh, system was under surveillance and there should be some ways to do it and that's not there in india that's not there in many countries therefore i mean any kind of allegation if it's correct ab- about interfering into any kind of uh, privacy breaching that should be addressed seriously that should be taken 
I mean, as a very, very public, serious public issue. Thank you, Shubhi. Uh, thank you, Sanal. And next question goes to Bindu. Oh, thank you, Deepti. The question I'm going, I'm going to ask is not fully related to the topic, yet if possible, it would be nice if you could provide me with an answer. We know in the 26-11 Mumbai terrorist attacks, the live telecast by the electronic media put the national security in danger. My question is, in such a situation, what if a person goes live, say via Facebook, how would that be treated? In short, how would this privacy policy be treated when it comes to national security? Thank you. The Mumbai terrorist attack was an unprecedented one. No, nothing of that sort happened earlier. So there was no precedent to make a, you know, a, a decision on that. So many channels reported it because they, are, they were in competition to present the best part of the whole thing. And the most channels, in fact, jeopardize the whole security issues involved. And even in the present context, there could be persons using their mobile phones and using Facebook Live or YouTube Live out of uh, general interest. But it could be a big violation to the security. So there should be clear laws now because since it is, you know, every time when you have an incident, then you know and uh, what, what was happening, then you study new lessons. So I think there should be a clear law in such a situation that uh, if there is a violence happening and if there is a certain level of uh, security risk is there, uh, there should be an announcement that this cannot be, uh, I mean, telecasted. It cannot be broadcasted in any form. There should be a clear understanding about that. And uh, it could be announced by the, the television or, I mean, national radio or public information system that it should be stopped. And also there should be public education that any kind of, uh, I mean, terrorist attack or violent situation should not be live telecast because it can be used by the persons involved for furthering, I mean, their own activities. In, in Mumbai's case, we know that, I mean, the, the telecasts were used by the terrorists to coordinate their activities. So that was a big danger. So in such a situation, when it happens, we study new lessons and there'll be new standards set up. I would say that, I mean, there should be a strict way of stopping. I mean, if there is a security risk, that has to be stopped, even by televisions or private persons, that has to be stopped. So that was, you know, never happened earlier and there was no precedent available. So there could not be anything that we could do for what happened at that time. But since no such an operation, so we could make a new standard how to do it. Will that answer your query, Bindu? Uh, yeah, one more question. Are there any laws, because it be happened way back in 2008, are there any laws in place now? I, I'm not aware of any law in that connection. I think in, in certain situations, uh, there could be uh, decisions taken by authorities. Uh, maybe there are laws. I do not. I'm not aware of any such law. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Hello, sir. Uh, like, uh, right to privacy, is it a natural right? Yeah. I would say that uh, it's a natural right which we were not aware of earlier. Many of the na natural rights. You know, what's a natural right? I mean, the, every kind of fundamental freedom of the individual is a natural right. So the right to privacy, yes, it is a natural right. But right to privacy against any kind of surveillance on internet is an advancement of the natural right that we have with a new device that came in our lives. The internet, I mean, the, the, the computer, the, the, the mobile phone. So I would insist that right to privacy is a natural right. It's a fundamental right. It should be, though it, it may not be a fundamental right or it is not in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, but it has to be recognized as a fundamental right and it has to be accepted as a natural right. It's equal to right to live and right to have food. You should have the right to have your freedom and right to have your privacy. So, uh, so it should be uh, like uh, uh, under the Article 21. Yeah, I don't know whether we can add any, any further fundamental rights, but there can be new laws. There can be new laws, very strictly implementing new laws to insist upon the right to privacy. How it can be brought into the, into the system that the legal experts have to talk about. But I think as a person who stands for the right of the individual, I would insist that it has to be respected and accepted as a 
one of the primary rights of the individual because it's a natural right to be of your own, of uh, decide upon what level of freedom you give for, to others to know about yourself. That was a wonderful session going on. Hi, Sanal. It was a wonderful session. Uh, I have a question uh, related to the uh, right of privacy. Uh, many parents these days create uh, uh, pages and social media profiles for the children without their content, uh, their consent, or you know they post any pictures, including uh, you know topless pictures or you know since the childhood. Uh, you know uh, I have uh, th there are some cases where, example, even if we see our childhood pictures where we are shirtless or you know especially a girl child, you know they may feel like you know uh, awkward, uh, you know that moment of the time. So. Uh, uh, is this not applicable for the child? That's my first question. And second, uh, what is your uh, you know uh, guidance for the parents basically on this uh, particular area? I would say that the photograph of children under a certain age should not be distributed publicly except to the private family or I mean close relatives or close family members or family friends because the child has. Uh, does not know about its right for privacy. Therefore, uh, the parents should be careful not to distribute or publicly display their photographs till they reach a certain age uh, where they are able to decide for themselves. And that, that's something everybody has to be careful because you have no right to take the right of a child because you are a custodian of the child, but you don't have a right to take the child's freedom or its privacy. The child can decide. Later, when it reaches a certain age, one can decide what shall be the age, 14 or 15 or whatever it is. It can decide to show any picture of the child or oneself. But uh, parents should not try to publicly display any pictures of any children before they become, they reach a certain age. That's number one. Number two, you know, children are not the property of the parents. They, they are parents only. They are not private property. They cannot display their photographs or uh, and, and handle their, uh, for example, their public profiles without their knowledge and their interference. And I mean, they, they cannot be the custodian for, or, or the public presentation should not be in the hands of the parents. And a child, when it grows, can should be able to challenge it if it's not acceptable for the child. As a norm, we should develop this idea that uh, children who should have the right to protect themselves and when they are not in an age to protect themselves, nobody should take away their right and it should be their right to decide whether their photographs should be shown publicly after they reach a certain age. Thank you. Uh, shall I add one more question? Please? Yes, 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 please. Uh, uh, like uh, there is a lot of peer pressure uh, on social media to you know uh, look uh, the best of themselves, like though, though they are going through suffering or depression, still they have uh, peer pressure to look uh, fantastic on the social media. Uh, what are your tips for these uh, children, especially like you know, a teenage or uh, the young adults, basically uh, on building resilience uh, uh, skills or you know, accepting the way they are, uh, despite of their body image, self-esteem, and all those issues? It depends on the individual also. For example, if a, if if a child is uh, in an activity, for example, if if a, if a child is a a sports person. Or, or a dancer, uh, for example, if the child is doing something of a public performance or something like that, they, that can be of course shown. But you know the kind of peer pressure that is on the child to show them differently than others or show them better than uh, others and to modify themselves accordingly, that's all part of the society. So there's nothing wrong in that. For example, if any, everybody wants to look good, what is wrong in that? And what is good and what is bad is a private perspective. And if somebody wants to have long hair and if one feels like good about that, what's wrong in that? Somebody wants to have a short hair and if that's the kind of a peer pressure coming on them and they should be able to do that. There is nothing wrong in, I mean, having something unconventional anywhere. But the whole thing is uh, when a person is not in the full control of that person's decision, it should not be done by other people. But once you are in a position to decide for yourself, maybe the age of 12 years or 13 years, maybe 14 years, whatever you can, society can decide, then whatever, I mean, peer pressures are there in every society. 
and that's to be taken naturally and whether you respond to the peer pressure or not is your choice you can do that you can reject that and i mean you you can accept it you can take it you 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 don't want to accept it and you can simply make an anti culture i mean or you can make your own new way of uh, presenting yourself but uh, these all should not be monitored or controlled very much by others but especially children when they are in their teens or young 20s they should be able to express themselves the way they want it without any interference that's how the you know the these the ideas of presenting oneself change the ideas of fashions change the ideas of looks change the ideas of patterns change and everything should change i mean there should be new and new ideas coming new and new ways of uh, presenting oneself should come and i mean it all should be naturally seen and i mean taken as the right spirit of going forward will that answer your question uh, to an extent okay. uh, i think you didn't you didn't touch upon the resilience part uh, maybe like how how they can uh, bounce back they can they can bounce back by deciding for themselves i mean so what what the way you want to present yourself is decided by you and you you can refuse the peer pressure you, you can ac- you, don't, you don't have to accept that it's your choice it's you know in society there are several streams of culture any kind of cultural pressure coming from a kind of new peer value system pressed upon you you can reject it see your resilience is based on how you see it it's based on your perspective and you cannot decide for others every single individual has to decide whether one has to follow it or one has to have a resilience against it or it's your choice you don't have to judge others and nobody will should be able to sit and judge how others should behave others should respond others should have their resilience because everybody has their right to respond to things the way they want it who are we to judge it and who are others to judge it i i am for total freedom of the individual yeah uh, thank you sanal okay thank you yeah so i feel like uh, we are done with the questions for uh, today and thank you everybody for joining and i feel like it was do like it was important to know about the right to privacy because even in like even my i've seen my friends even though like now we have questions related to uh, are you okay if we share your location or share your private information people tend to uh, not read it and just allow everything in their button so i think the whole information to and like to know what right to privacy is very important so thank you sanal sir for uh, bringing this topic today and uh, thank you everybody for participating and uh, we'll see you all next week now thank you very much and uh, i'm very happy about the wonderful response there that, that we are getting through the youtube now i mean because that's a new way of reaching people a lot of people opted to go through the youtube because it's easy for people and that's where we reach the next level of our communication thank you very much and if anybody who is not following our youtube channel it's youtube.com the the channel name is rationalist plural rationalist and those who are on the club house we have the rationalist club if you are not following please follow us and also we have other languages like in malayalam language we have yukti chinda another forum and uh, every sunday we have a meeting in english now and whenever we have a meeting that will be now relate on youtube and simultaneously will be heard in club house thank you very much